Hey guys, it's Randy at Dino Camps. And I know what you're all asking this week because we fielded many phone calls and answered many messages on why did we change the Ducar 212 rules? Uh, I'm sure that everybody's wondering what's the big deal? Why do we need a rev limiter coil? Why the push rod change? A lot of questions. So we thought we would make a couple of quick videos. Uh, these are not gonna be pro videos. These are just some how to's and some why's. We wanna answer two questions. Number one, why did we make the change? And number two, how do you implement the change? So first of all, I've got a used engine here. This is one of my personal engines that we have raced uh, a good bit. It's still got the stock governor. Everything is just like we've been racing it. Uh, if you paid much attention to our little video clip that we made where we showed the throttle shaft opening back and forth, I'm gonna show you kind of how that happens. So when you open full throttle on a governed engine, just like we would on a race, you'll see that the throttle shaft opens to the wide open position. And anybody that knows when you open throttle wide open, that's what we want as racers. We wanna go fast. Well, what happens is we fielded call after call after call the last several years on these do cars as to why some engines run so much better than others. It's usually not a matter of one making more power than another, but one on the racetrack seeming to be much faster than the other. So we've done a lot of investigating over the winter trying to figure out what's causing this. And what we figured out is on a governed engine, you gotta keep in mind, these things are designed to run at 3,600 RPMs for industrial use. Well, we're obviously racing them at close to 5,000 RPMs. So we're exceeding what this governor's designed to do. So when you open the throttle wide open, you obviously you want the throttle shaft to stay in the wide open position. But what we found is that some engines around 4,000, 4,200 RPMs, the throttle shaft will start to cut back like this because the governor can't hold it. So the shaft starts to work back and forth. Well, obviously you're not getting full throttle at that point. So your engine is drastically losing power. And then we found on some of the better running engines, some of the ones that you know seem to really race well, the engine might go to 4,800 RPM before the throttle shaft would start to cut back from the governor. So we know that there's no way to consistently race a governed engine. Uh, we've discovered that because like I said, some will start to cut the throttle back in the early 4000s and some will go all the way close to five before they'll ever move the throttle shaft. So we thought, well, what can we do to make it fair for everyone and make this class a, a more competitive class where engine A is just as good as engine B? That's where your rev limiter coil comes in. Um, we always have had a rule that you can't run these engines over 5,500 RPM. And if any of you have raced them much, you know that we don't even get close to that type of RPM on the track. So what our idea was come up with a rev limiter coil that's at a very competitive price. I mean, it's not something super expensive. Um, these coils are gonna rev limit around 5,200, 5,250. So we're well under that 5,500 number. Uh, and we can remove the governor. So now you can take a good engine, it's not gonna help it at all. But you can take an engine that's a dud and get it where it will be competitive. So that's our goal. Uh, I hope that answers the question as to why we wanted to make the change. And then there's one other thing you asked about. Um, we did make a push rod change, which is not technically a change. So I'll explain that one. The first batch of engines that came in in 2017, now keep in mind 2017 is well over six years ago. First batch of engines came in, they were wrong. They had a long push rod and a short valve on the exhaust side. The valve spring would coil bind, you couldn't even start these engines because the spring would coil bind. So our remedy was to go through all 500 of these engines and swap the 15 pound valve spring on the exhaust to a 10.8 valve spring. The reason we done that, because the 10.8 would travel more so we didn't have coil bind issues. Now, fast forward six plus years later, we corrected that problem on the very back next batch of motors. So all the engines since that first batch have come in with the regular 5.825 push rods like they should be on both sides. Got the right valve, got the right spring. So we're doing away with that. The, the old rule read 5.900 on the push rod length. We're doing away with that because we figure that six years is enough time to flush those engines out of the system. Everybody should be on the same playing field now with the 5.825 push rod. Uh, 
So if you've got any questions on that, you're welcome to call in our tech department. I can explain that further. But anyway, just wanted to give you a couple of reasons as to why this change was made. And in our next video installment, I'm going to show you how to remove the governor and how to go with this uh, rev limiter coil and what difference it actually makes. Thank you.